Hey, hello. You're with Wolf Gorlick, a couple minute riff on IT and IT security. Again, from an airport. I don't know about you, but one of the most frustrating things is getting off the plane. All you have to do, all you have to do, people, grab your bags, exit stage left. But you have people take their time, they sit there, they uh, dawdle, they look at the bags, they chit chat, they don't pay attention when it's their turn, and that slows everyone down. And I was thinking about that slowness. <laughs> And what you do during the slowness is hop on the line, right? You check Twitter, you do those sort of things. So on Friday when I'm flying out, stuck in a plane, uh, waiting for people to get off, I'm trying to check Twitter and of course can't get out. Getting the same type of delay. So tip for you, consider denial of service uh, and what its impact is on your key services. Not only Twitter, of course, but everything associated with it. Because on Friday, when I was stuck in a plane, when I'm trying to get Twitter and Twitter's down, a whole bunch of the internet was down because of a denial of service against DNS. DNS, of course, resolves the name to IP addresses for key services. So you punch in the name uh, Twitter, DNS gives you the IP address, you know, 10.10.10.5, and then your computer talks to that computer over the network to grab the packets and everything gets resembled. And you get your pretty pictures. But the problem is, um, if you can't resolve the name, you can't connect to that service. So a attack was launched using the Mirari uh, botnet. Same botnet, by the way, that took down Krebs recently. Uh, same botnet that took down Krebs and the source code was released recently. Covered this on the video as well. Um, that was used again with uh, these Internet of Things devices, cameras, what have you, to attack DynDNS. DynDNS uh, was originally well known for being one of the first, if not the first, uh, dynamic DNS services. So if you're at home and you're on DHCP, you could get Dyn DNS, and your computer address as it changed would send a packet to Dyn, say here's my new address, and then Dyn would update it. And this for a very long time, um, back in the like, mid aughts, was how I did my blog. Every time cable modem changed, Dyn DNS updated, anyone who hit, you know, triple dub jwgorlick.us will get the right IP address via Dyn. Dyn has since moved on to host DNS for some major players like Spotify, Twitter, what have you. So Mira kicks in. All these cameras, the toasters, the fridges, all the stuff that you got in your house kicks in. The now service slams against Dyne, kicks in, and our services go down uh, because we can no longer resolve the name. And people on planes who are frustrated because other people can't grab their bags and get off the plane and don't know how to plane right or deplane as the case may be, end up with nothing to view. Kind of frustrated, <laughs> but, but worse for an enterprise is what happens if that was Salesforce? What happens if that was Concur? What happens if that was insert web service here that you now rely on? Have you, within your business continuity plan, put in place a denial of service uh, clause and know how to act when these services go offline? Now that Mira is out and now that Mira has set the new baseline, we can expect to see a lot more of this. So make sure that you're considering denial of service attacks and your business continuity, especially when it impacts software as a service that is now crucial in so many of our business processes. That's it for me. What do you think? What did you do in the great Twitter outage of 2016? Who eat me? Let me know. Cheers.